Welcome to Excel Magic Trick 1316. Hey, if you want to download this Excel file, Excel Magic Trick 1316 start or the finished file and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we got a great video here about what to do when you're doing VLOOKUP with multiple lookup tables. We're going to see how to use the IF function define names and indirect function, the new switch and ifs functions in Excel 2016, and the good old standby choose. Now, this formula here using choose is the formula I've used for years. And I actually just posted a video a couple of days ago for the WAAT accounting seminar. And I showed the choose function there. And below this video right here, Excel Larium said, hey, why not try the new ifs functions rather than choose. Not only that, but there's also the switch function, which is new in 2016. And after I looked at Excelarium's formula, I was like, why? Why haven't I ever tried just the good old standby if function? All right, so we're going to see all of these examples here. Here's our setup. We have a product column and units. If I have ABC, I need to look these units up in this table and get the commission rate from the second column. Similarly, for EDR, I'm looking up 152, matching something in the first column, and then getting that commission rate and bringing it back. So one, two, three different tables. Now, this example has three tables. We could extend it to as many tables as we would like. All right, now. What we would do if we had a single table is I simply take VLOOKUP. I tell VLOOKUP to look up the units, comma. And in that argument, I would select the single table. So it's really this argument we need to talk about. I'm going to click Escape and just do the formula part that will retrieve the right table for whatever transaction line it is. All right, so let's start with IF equals IF. We need a logical test. I'm simply going to look one, two cells to my left, and I'm going to say, hey, product, are you equal to ABC? Now, notice I've put that in text in double quotes and hard coded it into my formula. Later, I'll show you an example where we don't hard code it, because sometimes that can be dangerous if this is going to change. But for the first example, we'll go ahead and just say, hey, product, are you equal to ABC? Comma. When that comes out true, we want to dump the whole table into VLOOKUP. Now I'm going to hit the F4 key because we're copying this down and we need it locked. Now, comma. Anytime you get to the third argument in IF and you have more than one option left, you have to nest a second IF tab. Now the logical test is, hey, the product. Notice we've repeated this logical test. Same cell, but now I'm going to say, are you equal to EDR is our second table, and double quote. That comes out true or false, comma. If that's true, then I want this table, F4 to lock it. Now, comma, we get to value of false. There is only one option left, and it's this table, so I simply highlight it, F4. Notice that this formula assumes that there are only three tables and only three products in this column. All right, now I close parentheses, close parentheses. There's our nested ifs. We have three options, so we use two if functions. Now I'm going to hit the F9 key to evaluate this to see if, it, in fact, it does return the right table. F9. And sure enough, look at that. 0.1% for the first one, 506%. It looks like it got the right table. Now I'm going to Control-Z. If I enter this, Excel cannot show an entire table, but no problem. I'm going to double click and send it down and just go to the next one, F2 to put in edit mode, F9 to evaluate it. And you can see for EDS, it looks like 0.2%. Look at that, 0.2%. And then the last category, 750 and above, 5%. Wow, so this if part looks like it's retrieving the right table. Control-Z, Escape. Now I simply come up here, since that whole if is going to be the table, I'm going to wrap VLOOKUP around it, lookup value. Remember, I'm looking up units in one of those tables. So the lookup value is units, comma. And that entire table array created by our two nested ifs will deliver the correct table, comma. 
one, two. The second column has the item we're trying to retrieve, so I type a two, comma. We are doing approximate match lookup. We can either put true in the lookup range argument, a one, or because it's the default, we can leave it out. I am going to backspace. Don't leave that comma there, because if you leave a comma with an empty, it'll think it's a zero, which is the same as exact match. I'm just completely going to leave that out. Anytime you do approximate match, that is OK. Close parentheses. Control Enter. Double click and send it down. I can go down to EDR 536. EDR, that is the correct rate. EDR right here, I'm just checking randomly. 342, it looks like it got the right rate. All the way down commission rate, it's looking good. Now, this works in any version. Let's go ahead and see the ifs versions, and we can compare and contrast in the process ifs with the if function. By the way, I have some reference videos over here, a complete video on choose, a complete video on ifs, and a complete video on switch. All right, equals ifs. And by the way, ifs and switch. That requires Excel 2016, Office 365, and you have to have the Insider program. If you go to these two videos over here, I have references for how to, how to find the Insider program, or, or you could do a Google search. All right, notice it says logical test one. That's because the S part means we can have multiple logical tests and values to return. So logical test one, I'm going to say, are you equal to? And instead of hard coding, I'm going to click on that cell and hit F4. So if, as I copy it down, the product is equal to ABC, comma. It says value of true one. I highlight the table, F4. Now, comma, logical test two. And notice we have these square brackets with two arguments in it. So logical test two, I'm going to say, hey, if the product is equal to EDR. I'm going to make sure and lock that, because that has to be locked all the way down, comma. And then I get the table. That is also locked, F4 key. There's the value of true 2. Now I type a comma. And there it is. We're off to our third logical test. If it's equal to relative cell reference over there, are you equal to, and now I'm going to say EDS. Now notice one difference, F4 key. Now notice one difference is with the if function over here, we had our third default table. We just slapped it in there. But here, we have to explicitly put all of the tests. But certainly, we don't have to nest those if functions. Now, comma, the value if true 3, that is our third table, F4. Now I simply close parentheses, and there's the ifs. If I hit the F9, you can see it's getting the right table, Control Z. Now I can simply wrap VLOOKUP around it. I'm looking up unit sold, comma. The IFS function is delivering the right table. I come to the end, comma. Column index number is 2. Close parentheses. The default is approximate match. Control Enter. Double click and send it down. And look at that, all the way down. It got it right. I could go to any particular cell, EDS. F2, the cell references are looking right. It got the right rate. Now let's go look at switch, which is probably the way I would do it. And even Excelarium uh, had a comment that says switch might be a little bit better because watch how this works as compared to the ifs. We have an expression, which for us is just going to be the thing we're looking at. Remember, both in the if and the ifs, I had to repeat the logical test numerous times. But here, it just always knows that it has to look at that cell A5, which is a relative cell reference for the expression, comma. Then it wants to ask, please give me the value to match against it and what the result will be if it's matched. So here, I'm going to click on ABC and F4. If it comes out ABC, then our result one is our table, F4. Now, when I type a comma, Notice square brackets always means you may or may not need this one. And look at this. It says the default or value 2. Now, we still have multiple items, so we're going to use the value 2. But notice the default 
that was not in ifs with an s. The default, there was a default. It was the value of false for the if. But here, we need to put our second value, which is EDR, F4, comma. Now the result to, that's our table, and F4 to lock it, comma. Now it says default or 3. Since there's only one table left, we can put the default. And now I'm going to F4. So that is a little bit shorter than both ifs and the if function. Close parentheses. Control Enter. I could double click and send it down just to test. I could go to any particular cell, F2, F9. And sure enough, for EDS, it got the right table. You can see that it matches there. Control Z, Escape. Actually, all I had to do was escape there because it would revert back to or whatever was in the cell before I put the cell into edit mode. Come to the top, F2. Now we simply V lookup. There's the units, comma, table array, that switch delivering multiple tables. Come to the end, comma, two, close parentheses. The default is approximate. Control Enter. Double click and send it down. Look at that. That is just beautiful. Any particular cell we're checking, it got the right cell references. Now, let's talk about define names and indirect function, which is by far going to be the easiest if you can create define names. And it will be the shortest formula. One big difference between if, switch, ifs, and choose is none of these functions are volatile. Indirect function, which we'll learn what that does in just a second, is volatile. That means when you change anything in the spreadsheet, the formula will recalculate. Now, for small spreadsheets with not a lot of formulas and stuff, it doesn't matter at all. It will not affect performance. But if you have big spreadsheets with lots of formulas, or maybe big data sets, lots of view lookups, then indirect function being volatile might slow down calculations in the spreadsheet. All right, so let's see how to do this. Ah, but now the way this is going to work is we need to name each one of these tables using the defined name feature. Now, one way to name a range of cells is simply to highlight the cells and come up to the name box. You can see that screen tip. Click, type A, B, C. And now when I hit Enter, that range is named A, B, C. I could test this by clicking somewhere else, coming up to the name box, and clicking on A, B, C, and instantly we could see it highlighted the right range. I could do that for each one of these. Come up here, EDR, Enter. And I better show you another way, because if you mess up using the name box, you need to know where to create, edit, and delete the names. Formulas, Name Manager, or the keyboard, Control F3. Now I can see if I needed to edit or delete I could do that. I could also create the name from here. Because I already had it highlighted, it has the right range. Now I simply can type EDS. Click OK. Click Close. And now I can clearly see from my drop down EDR, it got the right one. EDS, I got the right one. Now let's try this again. Equals VLOOKUP. I'm looking up units sold. And now just for a second, I'm going to try this. I highlight that whole thing in F9. Oh, wait a second. It didn't get the right range over here. Well, yes, that's still text. I'm going to Control Z. That cell contains text. There's no way the formula can see that it's a reference unless we use the indirect function. Now, the indirect function's only purpose is to take text that represents a reference and convert it to a reference. We already saw that A5, when we evaluate it, was the text ABC. Now close parentheses. Now let me click on Table Array. And now when I hit the F9 key, the indirect function did its duty. It converted text that represented a reference to that actual reference. Control Z, that is pretty amazing. Comma. 2 for column index table, because each one of these table has commission rate in the second column. Close parentheses. That is pretty short and amazing. Control Enter. 
double click and send it down. And all the way down, you can pick whichever cell you want, F2. And look at that. It went from EDS. The indirect function did its thing, F9. We can see it got EDS. Escape to revert back to the formula before I put it in edit mode. That is amazing. The good old if, all these years, and I never thought of using if to deliver multiple tables to VLOOKUP. I have done many videos on this. This is a great solution if you don't mind that volatile function. Switch 2016, that's pretty amazing. Probably the best if you want to avoid indirect. That's pretty amazing too. And that, I don't think I'm going to be doing that one very often anymore. Hey, I love hanging out on our online Excel team. Thanks to Excelarium for his comment. We'll see you next video.